Hey everybody, welcome to another Warships replay, and for this one I'd like to introduce you to a friend of mine. This is the Minikaze, this is the tier 5 Japanese destroyer, and arguably one of the best destroyers in the game. It's certainly one of the highlights of the Japanese destroyer branch. Now, the Minikaze is a little uh, interwar destroyer, I believe they were mostly in service in the 1920s. It's one of the fastest ships currently in the game. It has a top speed of about 39 knots. It's incredibly maneuverable and responds to controls instantly. It carries four single mount guns. I believe they're 120 mm or so. Um, they're not very good. And then of course you've got the torpedoes. It carries three twin tube launchers, which can fire torps um, of two sorts. The stock torpedoes have a 7 km range and about a 70 knot top speed. They come over from the Izakaze, uh, as you may have seen in my previous videos in that destroyer. And then the upgrade, inverted commas, torpedoes are 10 km range, but they lose about um, 10 or 11 knots of speed. Now, personally, I would say to stick with the speed over the range. It's a lot more useful. Um, you won't be spotted until you're within 6.1 kilometers of enemy ships, so 7 kilometers still gives you plenty of room to play with. Not only that, but there is a world of difference between a 58 knot, I think it is, torpedo, and a 69 or 70 knot torpedo. Um, they're very, very, very difficult to dodge, particularly at close range. Right away, I managed to run into the enemy Nicholas. Now, getting into a brawl with a Nicholas in any destroyer of around this tier is ill-advised. The Minikaze's guns just do not traverse quickly enough to really track another destroyer. In fact, they barely traverse quickly enough to track a battleship if you're trying to dodge incoming fire. Um, not only that, but the Nicholas has more guns than me. At least from mem- oh. No, sorry, I tell a lie. He has four guns as well, um, but his are just better, so same thing. Um, but he does also have the typical low-tier American destroyer torp layout, where he can talk from both sides of his ship. They're very short range, but destroyer brawls usually are short range, so it's not really a, a problem. I disengage as quickly as I can. Here you can see me popping smoke and boost. The reason I'm popping smoke isn't to try and hide from the battleships in front of me, it's to try and hide from the Nicholas behind me as he is the one that's spotting me. You'll also notice my detection meter there is flicking on and off. Now this was actually mentioned um, in a video that Jingles did, so I'm going to assume that you haven't seen that one. If you have then you already know why it's happening, but the reason it flicks on and off and I get spotted and unspotted, spotted and unspotted is because I'm going at full speed. The reason um, that that's been happening is because smoke screens in the game are put out as like a blip. You know, every every X amount of seconds, blip, 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 and then the smoke fills uh, in that blip. And basically what's happening is you're outrunning each pulse of smoke if you're going at top speed. So if you want to effectively hide in your own smoke, you need to go slowly. Not necessarily crawl or stop or reverse into it, but you just need to slow the fuck down. Um, which is counterintuitive, and it is something that kind of is difficult to, uh, to keep in mind when you're being shot at, but that's how it works. Anyway, I've managed to claim my first victim that enemy battleship pretty much just floated straight into my torps. And I'm already set up for a second run at the guy behind him. Now I'm gonna spoil the next 30 seconds or so here and tell you that this whole spread missed uh, just in front of him. He must have altered his speed or course very very slightly after seeing the other guy get blown up. Uh, sorry, no. I, uh, I tell a lie, not in front of him, behind him. Um, and so I decide to go in for another run. Yeah, you can see that one just missed his stern. It was very, very close. Now, the enemy battleship I sunk says that he was turning. Um, the problem is he began his turn when he saw the torpedoes, not when he saw the destroyer. And as I fire one of my three spreads into the beach there, um, once again, I can't reiterate enough how important it is to turn when you see a destroyer, not when you see his torps, because if you've seen his torps you're already fucked, 
especially if it's a Minikaze and his torps are going to reach you in about half a second because they're so goddamn fast. You'll also notice that the Minikaze, like the Izakaze before it, reloads really, really fucking fast. Um, you can basically just shit out torps perpetually from this thing. And so, if you're fighting one in a battleship, you really cannot afford to wait um, to begin your evasive maneuvers. I've come back for another pot shot at these guys from a different angle. However, I've got pretty much a straight on stern shot here, so it's very unlikely I'm going to hit them. If they're paying even the slightest bit of attention, they're going to turn out of the path of those torpedoes. But I have set myself up in a good position to make another run on them, should those miss, which it looks like they will. Now what makes the Minikaze so good and so popular is the fast reload of the torpedoes combined with their fast speed, decent range, and its agility. It makes it just the perfect ambush destroyer. At this tier, um, you have a really solid torpedo broadside, um, for lack of a better term. It puts out a lot of damage very quickly. Uh, obviously, if you're bottom tier, you may not be able to dominate so easily, but it's still a pretty respectable armament. And you've got it in one of the most mobile packages in the game. There are a handful of destroyers which compete with the Minikaze for speed. And so it makes it just a really fun little thing to play. Um, you know, just like there are fun tanks in, in World of Tanks in Tier 5 that people like to go back to over and over again, this is going to be a keeper. Um, the Mutsuki afterwards is not really an upgrade in any particular way. It's basically just a Minikaze with shittier torpedoes, um, but more of them. Or, well, no, not more of them. It's still six torpedoes, but they're arranged differently. Uh, you've got two triple tube launchers from memory. So, Mutsuki's not really an upgrade, and then the Hatsuharu after that isn't really a huge upgrade on the Mutsuki. It's a bit better, but not enormously better. So the Minikaze is really a, a, just a gem, followed by a couple of pretty ordinary ships, and that really makes it an object of... Uh, of affection for a lot of players in this game. This is one of the last ships that people will ever sell. Similarly to the Congo, which is one of the more solid battleships in the game. Now, I would make a World of Tanks comparison to what this plays like, uh, or, you know, like the what it feels like spiritually, but there isn't one. There is no Tier 5 in World of Tanks that can hit this hard and handles this well. Um, it's like... I don't know, honestly. Um, I just don't know. It's about as solid to play as the Churchill 3, but very obviously it is not a Churchill 3. Down goes yet another battleship for my third victim. And you can see how easy the Minikaze makes this look. It's just a fantastic little ship. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not the kind of ship you ever want to really grind out of. So keep the Minikaze once you actually finish and grind it out. Get an extra slot to continue grinding up the tree, but this is the keeper from the Engine Japanese destroyer line. This and the Shimikaze at tier 10 are really the only two I would say are worth keeping. The Wakataki maybe is okay um, if you do want to play a lot of tier 3 matches. Say you've got a a friend that likes to play their Aurora or something are going to be in those matches a lot, but the Minikaze and the Shimikaze are the two keepers from this line. The rest are either completely mediocre or really just don't uh, differentiate themselves enough to be worth keeping. For example, the Fubuki and Kagero really aren't that different from the Hatsuharu and they're worse than the Shimikaze for tier, so meh. Um, for the Battleships line, if you do want to keep something from that, I would say Congo, definitely, maybe Fuso. Uh, Nagato, definitely, is a very, very good brawler, probably one of the best in the game. Amagi, I quite liked. Um, some people don't, some people do. I, I would say Amagi's a keeper. And then um, the Izumo, maybe just for comedy potential. It's a bit of an odd ship. And then Yamato. So, definitely the 
Japanese battleship line has a lot more um, worthwhile ships in it, a lot more keepers, um, or at least a lot more ships that are worth playing even after you've ground them through. As far as the US lines go, um, I can't comment so well on them. Uh, I never got above tier 6 for US, no sorry, tier 7 for US destroyers, and that was way back in Alpha. Um, battleships, New Mexico and North Carolina are excellent, Iowa and Montana obviously, so really the only keepers in the American battleship tree are New Mexico and then tier 8 and up. Um, everything else is either shit or mediocre. Cruisers. Don't ask me. Uh, I haven't played cruisers nearly as much as I'd like, so I'll have to get back to you on that one. This is all but over. That poor enemy cruiser there is desperately trying to cap for all he is worth, but it's just not gonna happen. And so I finish up with a very, very good three kills from ten torp hits and a couple of medals on the side. A good match.